So, uh, first room we have here is our sand blasting booth. Basically, um, you walk in here with a suit on and you have an air mask that uh, produces air so you can be in here full person and blast out wheels and motorcycle frames and all kinds of big stuff. So, basically the object of having this room is just to be able to strip paint and coatings off. So. Next room over here is where we do powder coating. So basically, you have your rack, you have fans, you have a small sandblast that you do for smaller, smaller batch parts, stuff like this, you know, small motorcycle parts and car parts. It's a curing oven, and basically how, how the powder coating works is have a metal rack that's grounded to the floor and then the powder coat units actually they have power units up here and they're basically everything's grounded and then that's positively charged so basically when you spray powder at it it'll go to a ground source so i'm gonna actually show you really quick yeah let's do a color because it actually doesn't really matter you can blow it off we'll do like a sparkly red I just gotta turn my air compressor on. Alright, now that we have air, basically you can watch how the part attracts the attracts the coating. This is completely cold, you can touch it with your hand. When you spray it, the powder is gonna electrify and then find the ground, so basically it's it's just gonna stick right to the metal. And uh, that's basically how it works. After you do this and it's fully coated, then you put it in the oven for a certain amount of time. And it's, uh, it's about like three times more durable than paint. So wow. pretty much anything metal you can powder coat. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah it just like catches it. Yep. It's weird because a lot of people don't really know the difference between paint and powder coat. Like they don't understand like what it is, but it is physically a powder. Wow, yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, we got into it like really like in a big way last year. And since then we've just been doing a ton of parts here for kind of anything. Like I have a lawnmower deck in the other room. And, there's always car parts and motorcycles that are uh, motorcycle parts in our shop. So I saw the wagon project too. That was really yeah. Fun. yeah, yeah. Cindy did that. And, uh, she powder coated the whole thing, and it came out really awesome. There won't be nobody to stop us, cause we'll we'll already have you dead, dead and buried. Mount in the shop. So this is our shop. We, uh, we've owned it for about three years now, um, my wife and I, and we started it out of our uh, single car garage in our apartment in Franklin, Wisconsin. And then um, basically got so insane that I had like motorcycles inside of our house. So then we ended up finding a shop space and it took a while, but finally came into this spot and we really liked like the way it's like the building's super old. It's like from, I think it's 1912 or something. Mm. Um, so it's just cool, like all the old school vibes you get. And I'm pretty sure it's haunted. So it's like, <laughs> you hear all these weird noises at night. And like I've had some, some times where like, I've, there was like shadows, and like just crazy stuff. And I'm like, man, I love this building. It's got soul. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the souls are good. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they are. <laughs> Not really sure. We painted everything in here like when we moved in, but it was a total shithole. Like when we got here, like there was there was one light that worked, and there was two outlets, and they were up on the ceilings. I was like, you had to okay. do all the wiring and everything. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So um, basically, my dad and I did all the wiring, did all the lighting in the shop. Had friends um, come and do the lighting in the office. Since we started, it's always been like my family helping us out, like our friends like really believe in the shop and like they really think it's cool and it just like connects everyone. I've, I've met some of my best friends just through having a business. It's pretty easy to make friends over motorcycles, honestly, like yeah. what an easier way. Mm -hmm. I always tell people like, 
if you're lonely and like you want like you want to hang out and be, meet people like just buy a motorcycle and like if you get a bike and you're really serious about it like it will for sure change your life mm -hmm. and that's what it's done for me too because i couldn't even imagine like if i didn't buy a motorcycle six years ago or whatever mm -hmm. you i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been it's been a work in progress like, pretty much like buy all used stuff if we can but most of my stuff i was able to like save up and buy it on marketplace or craigslist and it saved me a whole lot of money and it like the machines still work great so yeah they got years left in them <laughs> that's awesome basically right now um we work on like the shop has changed like so many different times like at first i started i was doing pretty much anything like service work repair welding fabrication custom stuff and then it got to a point where i was so busy doing mm -hmm. that basically just wanted to like only do customizing i got into doing uh, spoke wheels because mm -hmm. there's not many other shops around here that can do that and then basically welding and fabrication i've always loved doing it and custom motorcycles so like this one behind me um, i built for my friend dean pretty much started from like this old motorcycle it was like a brown bike and it like I don't know, it just looked kind of dorky he'd let me kind of go nuts with it and just make a cool bike and it took uh, like a couple of years to actually build it i think we were both really happy with the outcome i think it's a pretty sweet looking bike <laughs> it's basically it has like all the fancy knickknacks it's got like led lighting on it it has led bar and signals tail lights embedded into the seat like I, I can plug it in really quick so like you wouldn't really be able to tell but mm -hmm. the seat's got the tail light embedded with the turn signals as well i didn't even notice these they're so yeah, invisible it's so, it's so small and like it's not like other motorcycles where you have like big turn signals sticking out here and you have big mirrors and yeah. um everything's really really tidy and you know, you can see from the back, the sides, the front. So it's it's cool using products like Moto Gadget and uh, I think Kellerman's the other one I use. But they're like they're awesome because it makes the bike look really sleek and cool, and then it's also safer because those are like three times brighter than a regular turn signal. Uh, the next one I have going on right now is a BMW R100. I got it when I was back in my garage. Um, it's my friend Nate's bike, but. Uh, Basically, I was working on both of these at the same time. I got into doing this back end and I didn't know what to do because I wanted to make it basically like a single sided swing arm so that the wheel only bolts on from one side and then it's totally open here so there won't be any swing arm on this side. I pretty much got like, wow, like this is crazy. I, I don't know how I'm actually going to accomplish this. Um, with help, help from other friends, Godfrey's Garage, I'm going to be building my own like mono shock single-sided swing arm for this it's really cool to like really like go way out of my comfort zone and like try doing things that i've never done before because yeah. i don't know i feel like if you're not doing that like it's not really you're not really enjoying it takes yeah. a village too yeah <laughs> it does so this is the next one i'm trying to push out of our shop it doesn't look like a whole lot right now just because it's sitting on the frame jig but we already have the front end together for it and then it's just going to be a bunch of knickknacks and putting an exhaust on doer wiring so. yeah this is um this is the custom supermoto i've been working on this is actually my bike but um i was really jealous of all my friends having like really nice power coated bikes custom graphics and supermoto wheels and stuff like that so i i was like man i gotta do this to my own but i don't have time you know so i basically all the guys came over and ripped my bike apart and then helped me like get it all prepped and stuff like that so Right now we're in the assembly stages still. I'm waiting on a bunch of parts from Honda. It's cool. It's like an older older dirt bike. It's a 2005 and it's really cool that like you can fully rebuild it and it'll look brand new within a few weeks. I guess I just have a couple other projects I got working on. Uh, there's a Triumph that I'm just doing a little bit of fixing up and getting ready for the season for my old boss. This one is for my friend Chris. He pretty much didn't, he couldn't ride it for a while because he had like a baby and life got really busy. So I think this will be like what he needs this year, especially after all this crazy stuff going on. So. <laughs> samples um so you, if you like want to come and check out powder coat samples we have like a bunch of pistons that we did um or there's like color cards with all kinds of crazy stuff on them so um we can pretty much get any of these colors um and more too this is probably like a third of what you can actually get so 
but these are some of the parts that we had sprayed already, just to like show people textures and colors, um, stuff like that. It's it's really cool that you can like achieve with powder coat, like just crazy wild stuff. Really works cool for like customizing your bike. Um, over there is where we do all like the wheel lacing and trimming. So I always have like a bench full of spoke wheels laying out. So pretty much we like take them all apart. So like we'll start with something like, looks like this, like rusty, all dusty. And then we take it apart, pull the bearings, um, sandblast it. And then you end up with whatever colors you want. So could look like that. Could look like this one over here. Basically like we can powder coat the spokes and nipples and they're actually a lot more durable than stock wheels. So it's, it's kind of an upgrade, if you will. Those wheels are for this bike, which we built this wheelie stand for the Mama Tried Show, which was unfortunately canceled. Kind of a bummer, but we were like, all right, let's just set it up in the shop so people can enjoy it <laughs> yeah. a little bit. So it's kind of in your face, but we built it so that you could actually like jump on the bike and like, you can like be on it in a wheelie. Wow. It feels really, really cool. I did the uh, mural. Oh, um, that was actually Cindy's brother, Craig. Mm -hmm. He works for the Milwaukee Art Museum and he like is an artist. He drew up some this design here and I was like, yeah, man, it's like do whatever you want. Like, he's like, yeah, I want the whole wall. I was like, oh shit, really? <laughs> like, so yeah, he did the whole wall. It's like a piece that everyone, literally everyone comes in the shop and like a lot of people ask about it. So mm -hmm. I, that's what art's about, you know, like sharing it around and it's uh, just cool to look at. But yeah, in between powder coating work, um, I pretty much work on motorcycles off to the side. So this is this is my full time gigs. But yeah, yeah, it's been it's been crazy. Like since I started in my garage, like I was obviously working a full time job, and then like over the years, it was like I was slowly detaching from it to where I couldn't work on motorcycles every day. And it's crazy because like I thought like oh man like when I quit my full time job, I'm gonna have so much time to like get stuff done. It's gonna be insane. But it's wild because like more work comes in because I have more time to like market it and stuff like that. And it's just crazy. Like I still don't have time. Like I, I get done at the end of the day. I'm like, I still could do more, but like I need to stop at some point. I, I put in a lot of hours every week, but I love it. So it's it's hard to really call it work. <laughs> Cindy and I, like I, I don't, there's no way I could have done this stuff without her. And she's always like, oh, what do you want to do? And I'm like, oh, like we're starting a motorcycle shop. And she's like, do it. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah she, she's uh, she's really driven, and then it helps me too because I'm I like literally cannot stop ever. A lot of people ask me like, oh, like what if it fails? I'm like, well, honestly, this is what I would be doing anyways. Like, I would pay to have this here, lose money basically to have it here because like this is what I love doing. So, it's it's like really can't fail if you're that invested. Like that's your passion. Are you gonna fail at riding motorcycles? Like, no, I'm gonna always ride motorcycles. So. At least as long as I can. For these days I go through. For these days.